Let's bring in now the Israeli Minister of Strategic Affairs, Ron Dermer. Mr. Dermer, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's begin with that intelligence Good report. to be with you, George. Thank you for joining us. Did Prime Minister Netanyahu see any of this intelligence warning of an Hamas attack? Not that I'm aware of. I think the report that you're talking about is the New York Times report, which dated it back over a year. So the prime minister wasn't prime minister at the time. It was uh, it was a previous administration. But I don't know if they saw it. And frankly, George, all of these questions, we're going to have to get to the bottom of it. Uh, after the war, we're going to have a serious investigation. That's what Israel does. And we'll be able to answer all these questions. But the first time I saw that report was when it was published in The New York Times. Why wait until the end of the war? It seems like this war is going to be going on for some time. Well, because I think it's very important during a war to unite all the forces to achieve uh, a common goal, which we all have, which is to dismantle Hamas's military capabilities to end its political rule in Gaza and to ensure that Gaza doesn't represent uh, a threat to Israel and also to return the hostages. And I want to use this opportunity, George, also to thank the Biden administration, President Biden, the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, and also your CIA, uh, I, CIA Director, Bill Burns, for the efforts uh, that they put into ensuring that this hostage deal would happen. And we were able to bring 80 women and children home. And I think that's quite an achievement. And I don't know if it would have happened to this extent without the direct engagement of the United States, starting with the president. Any help for getting those talks started again? Uh, well, we'll have to see. I think right now, uh, as you know, a couple of days ago, Hamas did not put forward a, a list. There are women and children uh, that have been left behind in Gaza. They're claiming that they're not there, but they are there. We know they're there. America knows they're there. Even the Qataris know they're there. Uh, and they decided to not uh, uh, finish this uh, deal and, and perhaps move to another deal. What we know is that the thing that brings Hamas to the table and his willingness and its willingness to make a deal is military pressure. And that military pressure continued on Friday and it will continue uh, in the days and weeks ahead. And then we'll have to see if there will be uh, open mindedness on the part of Hamas to make uh, uh, further deals. But remember, we're going to achieve our military objective, which is to dismantle Hamas's military capabilities in Gaza to end its rule there. That's going to happen. And hopefully we'll be able to bring all of our hostages home as well. And you have eight hostages, I think. Uh, in Gaza still, Americans, there are people of many, many different nationalities, but we're trying to get everybody home. How close are you to that goal of eliminating Hamas as a military threat? Well, we still have some ways to go. Uh, we operated largely in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. We're still operating in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. And we've told people in the southern part of the Gaza Strip to start getting out of harm's way. As uh, Mr. Kirby said, we've uh, we, we presented a map of where there are safe places for them to go. We hope they'll listen. Uh, when we went into the northern part of the Gaza Strip with a ground operation, many, many people left the areas of conflict. Uh, 200, 250, 300,000 people went south, and that was very good. And as we're operating in the north, we again encourage everybody to get out of harm's way. We've provided these humanitarian safe corridors for people to go. And now that they have this map, and we're calling on people to make sure that they're getting out of harm's way. We don't want to harm Palestinian civilians, and we're working very hard to achieve that goal. And here, too, we appreciate the support of the United States, not just in, in helping us deal with the aid agencies within Gaza, the UN uh, agencies within Gaza to ensure that there would be safe areas, but also for humanitarian assistance. Because it's not just Israel that has to ensure and enable humanitarian assistance to flow. There's Egypt, there's other international organizations there. And here, U.S. support has been critical as well. Despite those calls, the civilian casualties continue to climb. We saw that UNICEF director there and Tom Sufi Burge's piece. And we heard Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin say that if that continues, this could be not only humanitarian disaster, but a strategic calamity for Israel. Your response? Well, listen, we're doing everything we can to keep civilians out of harm's way. I, I want the American people to understand this. This war is not going on thousands of miles away. It's going on literally hundreds of yards away, and it's going on at a time when rockets are flying into our country and we have people running to bomb shelters. I think what the Israeli army has done in, in prosecuting this war is unprecedented in the history of warfare. When you have an enemy right on your border, uh, and you're doing everything to get the civilians uh, of that enemy out of harm's way. I don't think any other country, including the United States, I don't know if you ever faced a situation like this, would take such great care. So we agree with the United States that we want to do everything we can to reduce civilian casualties and to ramp up humanitarian assistance. Uh, and we'll continue to do that as we uh, prosecute this war. 
Let me ask you the same question I asked John Kirby. What is the diplomatic endgame here? Does Prime Minister Netanyahu agree with President Biden that a two-state solution is still viable? Well, what the prime minister has said for many years, and you've interviewed him over the years, is that we want the Palestinians to have all the powers to govern themselves, but none of the powers that they can use to threaten Israel. And that's something when we get back to negotiations, we'll have to see how we do that. I know that everybody is racing forward right now to try to establish a Palestinian state. For the people of Israel, they don't even understand that because we just suffered the equivalent of 29 11s. And I think the last thing you want to do is send a message to any terror group that the way you're going to achieve some sort of aim is to perpetrate a massive terror attack. I think right now what we have to focus on is destroying Hamas. We have to get rid of this terror organization, this ruthless, brutal terror organization within Gaza. I think that's going to present many different opportunities. It's going to enhance Israel's security. It's going to be very good for the Palestinians of Gaza because they're not going to have to go through round after round. And I think it's going to open the door to a regional peace. And in the context of that regional peace, we'll have to figure out how we can put ourselves on a path towards an ultimate political settlement with the Palestinians. That's what everybody wants. And I think we can get there. But the first thing we have to do is destroy Hamas, which is not interested in any peace, any two-state solution. They just want to destroy the state of Israel. How long is that going to take? Is it really possible? It is definitely possible. I think we've shown uh, over the, remember, we've only been fighting for uh, less than uh, two months, and we just had a pause for about a week. We're going to achieve this goal. Uh, we're going to do it in the deliberate fashion because we are at very conscious of having civilians there and getting them out of harm's way. If we wanted to do it fast, we'd harm a lot more civilians. We're going to achieve that goal. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if it's weeks. I don't know if it's going to be months. But it's going to take as long as it's going to take because we're not going to allow what happened on October 7th to happen again. We're going to rid Gaza of this organization, this terror organization, Hamas, free Gaza from Hamas, and hopefully that will give hope to Palestinians, to Israelis, to everybody in the region who wants to go in a different direction. Ron Dermer, thanks for your time this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.